European away day fans rejoice. Today we are back with the Conference League knockout rounds. We are taking on Jelena, our affiliate, who we already played in the group stage at home, this time over two legs. We beat them 9-0 last time, so I've got high hopes today. But before all of that, there is the small matter of the Carabao Cup final. We are taking on Unai Emery's Liverpool team, and this is a Liverpool team that is directly behind us in the league right now. Before we go into a recap of the results, I need to show the league table. There is 10 games left of the season. Liverpool are two points behind us. Tottenham are four points behind us. And all those games in hand we had, well, they've gone. Things are hotting up across all competitions. We are battling away on multiple fronts today. Potential silverware. And hopefully, we're going to go marching on in Europe. The treble of the Carabao Cup, the Conference League... And the Premier League. Does that count as a treble? I don't know. It's still very much on. We're going to recap some results. We're going to talk transfers, but not before we run that intro. Let's do it. I mean, let's be honest, transfers, very, very exciting in Football Manager, aren't they? That's what you want to hear about immediately. We won't delay. You might be thinking, Jack, did Warunga leave at the end of last episode? You were thinking of selling him? The answer's yes. I sold him to Salzburg for £35 million. And, I don't know, I had really high hopes for Warunga. He allegedly had potential. I think he probably does have that potential, but... He never really improved during his time at the club. In some ways, I'm relieved that we got money back for him. I suppose when you consider we spent £2 million on him, it's a great deal. We gave him a chance in the first team. We gave him plenty of first team football. This year just wasn't getting the same amount of game time. I'm happy with this one. And well, you might have spotted it here. Warunga is the only departure. And that's because despite Jaime telling me he's going to leave at the end of his contract at the end of the season... I've decided to keep him around. I feel like this player, at this point in the season, I need to have. He's one of the most influential players in the dressing room. Professional personality, really determined. As we hit a crunch point in the season, I think his experience, his kind of influence on the squad is going to be important. When you look at our team, it's a team full of players in their early 20s. So by comparison, Jaime is that veteran experience. And that's rather important. Also, at the end of last episode, I was talking about signing Aveda. Uh, he's decided to go to Real Madrid instead. So the, the dream of having two Mexican forwards tearing it up on the island of Guernsey, dead. That said, we did pick up a Warunga replacement in Danny Lopez Gonzalez. This man, just a super versatile backup fullback option. Third choice right back, third choice left back. Already playing a little bit in the team. Done fine so far. And of course, as an English team in the Premier League, you're allowed to make six under-21 signings from outside the UK per season. I'd only made five, so at the end of January, I decided to add our sixth and final signing. It is Victor Manasiev. That's right. We've got rid of one unique nationality in Warunga the Kenyan and replaced him with a player from Macedonia, which, I mean, I'm hoping he's going to be good. When you look at him, he looks absolutely phenomenal. Yes, I will be training him to play Regista and as a defensive midfielder. Please don't judge me. Now, you might be wondering, Jack, when you left things last time, there was a big cushion at the top of the Premier League. What happened? I'll tell you what's happened. A month and a half from hell. We've had a lot of matches. We've had injuries. We've had to rotate things around. And to be honest, it's all just kind of caught up with us. We ended last episode having beaten Newcastle 3-0 and having beaten Norwich 3-0 in the league. Since then, it's been far less convincing, although what was convincing was a win against Exeter in the FA Cup replay. After that game, we did have to take on Arsenal, who of course are a very, very high flying team. This season, they've got Zidane as their manager for the previous however many years, 14 years. Arteta was the man. Zidane's come in, media prediction of third. They're currently in fourth. They're not a million miles away from us. Disappointing to draw that game, but not nearly as disappointing as losing to Leeds United 2-1 in a game where you were winning 1-0 until the 88th minute. I'll hold up my hands and say it, this was a semi-rotated team, and well, the semi-rotated team was doing great. Cadman, great little composed finish to get open up the scoring in this game, and from there, from the 15th minute to the 88th, nothing happened, and then suddenly, Leeds United remembered how to attack. Pablo Torre, my, my son, the part of Premier legend, involved in the build-up play there as Tezgal scored, and well, having scored one against us, I went more attacking, foolishly. We got caught out on the counter-attack, and it was another good finish. 
And yeah, second defeat of the season. They very much constitutes a bottle. Things didn't get much better either. We crashed out the FA Cup against Newcastle United. I did play a semi-rotated team for this game, but nevertheless, still very, very annoying. From there, the most recent month has been better, but not flawless. Wins against Peterborough and Leeds United in a revenge game were nice, but a draw against Brighton... Slightly less impressive. Again, Rios getting on the score sheet a lot. This man has 13 goals in the Premier League from centre-back. Still think he could be a time traveller. We did get a really important win though, 1-0 over Newcastle United. Big knock with the all-important goal in the 8th minute. A player who's not really been chipping in with a, a whole load of goals this season, although he has had a lot of injuries to deal with. He did get a goal in the very next game. Unfortunately, it was all in vain. Away from home, in fact, no, it wasn't even away from home. It was at home against Manchester United. That makes it even worse. We lost this game 2-1. We started terribly. First half was awful. We got shouty-shouty. In the second half, we crazy created so much but we couldn't find the back of the net we couldn't get the all-important second goal and with it another defeat we did end the month with a really good result against West Ham United though 3-0 win here Alanis getting in on the score sheet he had been on a really poor run of form I did the thing you know where you, you take a player to the side and have that little angry chat where you warn them about their form and then they immediately score Alanis did that in this game. Great to have him back at goal-scoring ways. Ganino also getting in on the score sheet. A player who's been playing a surprisingly large amount of football this year, considering all the injuries he's had. I've been very impressed with him. He's played at defensive mid. He's slotted in at centre-back, I think, once. He's played right back. Yeah, big Ganino enjoyer. So as you saw, we are out of the FA Cup, which is a little bit of a shame, but it does allow us to focus on the other competitions, namely the Premier League, where... You look at things, we've only lost three games this year. We've done very, very well. Our media prediction, just as a reminder, was 12th to win the league. Um, I do feel like we could be Arsenal in real life here, where we lead the league for a really long time, but with a young squad, we kind of just get unstuck as the good teams around us start to win a little bit more. I mean, let's look at the positives. We've got a positive 42 goal difference. When we win, we win by miles. Unfortunately... We've drawn a few too many games for my liking, and with 10 games left, we've got Liverpool and Tottenham back-to-back -back very soon. In fact, those games you can see against Tottenham and Liverpool, and also Man City, all back-to-back -to, -back to start the month of April. I think we know what we're doing next episode, although I say that. Conference League's going to move all the games around, isn't it? I don't know what the plan is. But I do know what the plan is for right now. Carabao Cup final, Liverpool hunting us down. This could be a big psychological battle. We won this competition last year. We hoisted the trophy. Uh, I'm going to go prepare myself. There's a small part of me that doesn't want to do well in this competition, so I don't have to drink Carabao. But at this point, I feel like we've just formed a tradition. It doesn't taste any better today. So in terms of team news, this is the team we're going with. I think this is our best 11 on the whole. One player missing is Matthew Cadman. Unfortunately, has had a few more issues with injuries this year. Both he and Big Knot not had extended runs in the first team. What it does mean is, is that Diallo is going to come in and play as that inside forward out on the left-hand side. Diallo this year in the league... Hasn't been amazing, but in European competitions, he has been absolutely tearing it up. Going to hope that maybe he just doesn't like the Premier League. Maybe it's a cup game thing. Uh, I say that. He's got six goals in four Carabao Cup games and an 8.2 rating. So I've got full faith in him. Elsewhere in the team, we are going with Grasa and Alunga at centre-back. Alunga just locking down this Regista role more and more. Putting in a string of really good performances. Four assists, one goal in his last 10 games. And if you're wondering about club record signing Craig Sweeney, how's he been doing? Well, I've been giving him game time. He's been developing. Unfortunately, as we learnt last episode, he's cup-tied in the Carabao Cup so he's not even on the bench today. We won this competition coming back from behind last year against Newcastle United. I'm going to hope that history can repeat itself. With us winning it, I don't really want to have to come back from behind. Of course, they've got Endrick. So uh, mm, maybe I should say a prayer or something. Dear Carabao gods, please protect me from Endrick. Carabao. Okay, uh, prayer done. I'm ready. Early highlight here, only two minutes into this game. Mansilla on the near side for Liverpool, looking to go wide. Rojas shepherds him away, but I'll tell you what, he's got in behind Rojas. He hits it against the crossbar. Coppo gets it away from danger. I didn't really want to see Liverpool hitting the woodwork inside the first three minutes. We've seen it. Time to react appropriately and click the demand more button. Managing's a complicated job. Adu Jamfi on the far side, laying it to Grasa. Coppo Alunga. Alunga capable of picking out passes from deep. He's picked out Alanis here. Got two goals against West Ham. Lays it to Lemos. And Gustavo with his 14th goal of the season. 
Really, really nice ball here by Alunga. Alanis, super intelligent run as well to move across, drag the defender with him, and it just created a channel for Lemos to go into, and the Shadow Striker finishes it superbly. Unlike last year, winning this competition I don't think is going to determine whether or not we get European football for the coming year. That said, I'd still very much like to win it, obviously. He says, you're in a cup final, of course you want to win it. It doesn't matter what cup final it is. But especially this one, now we're a goal ahead. I want to believe we can go out and see this job through. Although I know with 65 minutes left, the job is far from done. We have possession here. Alunga and Big Knot, little one too. Alunga with a bit of a sloppy pass there. And Banza gets in behind Zosimo. Mansilla on this left-hand side, cutting inside. The number 12 hits it. Manny Wilford playing against his former club. Very good job in goal so far in this game. I say all of that. I feel like I jinx him. Whenever you talk good about a goalkeeper and football manager, the, there's like, football manager can hear you. It taps into my microphone. It knows what I'm saying. Diallo, don't score it. Okay, maybe not. I tried reverse psychology and the game just did psychology and listen to me. Corner here. Adi Jamfi. Where is Rios? There he is. Oh, I'll tell you what, for a second. I thought it was going to find the back of the net. Another corner. We know where it's going. Let's not pretend otherwise. Rios is under it. He hits the crossbar. It's hacked away from danger. Looking threatening from set pieces. I feel like that's a line that I say a lot. But when you've got a weapon like Rios, can you blame me? He's like a battering ram that we just send forward. Defensive duties, though, going to be needed from Rios as well here. As Liverpool are on the attack and... I think that was a deflected shot that's gone over. I can't believe that that was the actual highlight. So I'm going to brace myself here for more action. Mansilla over it. We've got some big meaty men in the box. We should be dealing with it. We've not dealt with it. They've hit the woodwork. Trent Alexander-Arnold still playing for them at right back. They've not moved him to midfield. He is retiring at the end of the season. I'm confused. He can't be their best right back, can he? I'm not going to question it. He's playing in this game today for them. Mansilla over. I'll tell you what, there's been lots of corners in this game. It's like going in my fridge. There's Muller corners everywhere. Wilford, though, on this occasion, collects it. Like I already said, Wilford, of course, cast aside by Liverpool, was loaned to us with an option to buy him. We extended that option. He's now been our first choice goalkeeper for a year and a half. He wants to get revenge against his former club. And, well, he's been called into action a lot in this game. He could be called into action more. And, well, you're almost expecting to be called into action more before this game is over. Lemos lays it wide to Big Knot. Has had a couple of goals in recent games. He lays it inside to Grasa. Really intelligent play there. Alunga, Big Knot, in behind. Squares it. Alanis scores, but the flag is raised. I don't even get a chance to celebrate it was raised so early. Two minutes of added time here at the end of the first half. 50-50 possession. Chances even either way. At the end of this game, uh, and at the end of this half rather, I feel like the difference has just been the finishing. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I want them fired up. Alanis and Lemos playing superbly. Wilford's been called into action. Going to hope we can step it up a level in the second half. Last year in the Carabao Cup final, we were 1-0 up at... Oh, no, 1-0 down at half-time, and we lost 2-1. So we know that teams can bottle it from this position, looking at you, Newcastle. We need to remain switched on here. The fact that three of our players are on yellow cards absolutely ter terrifies me. Ganino, Onyukun for Rojas, Coppo. I'm going to take off Coppo for Tejera. That could be an error, but I just feel like it's right. And Diallo's not doing amazingly either. I'm going to bring in Sula, who's actually now going to play as a winger on his left foot. I think that could be quite nice, actually, for targeting Trent Alexander-Arnold, who isn't exactly the quickest player in the world. We could have some joy down this left-hand side, and it's where this highlight's going to begin. Sulla, the sub, puts it in. I don't know what's happened. The keeper... I couldn't get to the deflected cross. It's fallen to Alanis. It's 2-0. I'm going to claim it's tactical genius because I've just brought on a winger on the left-hand side. We get a throw-in on the left-hand side, and then Sulla puts the ball in. It deflects wickedly. I feel a bit bad for the goalkeeper. He definitely should do better, but not going to complain. Alanis scores. He's now got a goal and an assist in the Carabao Cup final. And it could get worse for Liverpool yet. Lemos whipping it towards the back post. It's headed away. Rios, the time traveller. He's got the ball here. He is on a yellow card, so he's got to be well behaved. Tejera, Rios. Not a usual sight to see your two centre-backs work in the play down the wide area. Rios puts it in as well. Of course, he has got very good passing range. We saw it on display there, and he's going to lay it wide to Ganino, who's going to try and pick out Big Knot. Can't quite get in there. 27 minutes left of this game. At 2-0, I'm feeling a tad karma. And to be honest, in this half so far, Liverpool haven't done a load going forward. 
But we know with the quality they've got, they only need half an opportunity. A third goal may well be necessary. And well, a third goal, it could be on the cards. Gustavo Lemos get into the byline, pulls it back to Grasser. Alunga, edge of the box, pulls the trigger. I think that's deflected off someone and gone in. Alanis is celebrating it. I don't know if this is offside. It could be 3-0. My heart says Alanis was offside. Did it come off the defender? I don't know. Is the goal going to count? The answer is no. It would have been an Alanis goal. Apparently it hit Alanis on its way through. Alunga will claim it was a pass. We know otherwise. And, well, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter who it came off. It's been given offside. It's been highlights galore in this game. There's still 23 minutes left. And now it's Liverpool in possession. Laying it forward to Zosimo. The striker, who of course got two goals against us as Liverpool beat us 3-0 earlier on in the season in the league. Looking for a bit of revenge after that game in this one here. We've had it so far, but still lots of action to be played. Alunga, superb reading of the play. Alanis, what a turn that is. Lays it to Lemos. Options left, options right. Sula's the man he's picked out. He's going to cut inside. And I mean, he's left-footed. I don't know why he's cutting on his right foot there. Answers on a postcard, I don't know. Already made a triple sub here. I'm going to make another change. Big knot, off you come. I'm going to bring in Gaspar to cut in on his left foot. Temptation maybe to rush Cadman back into the team for this game. But given the fact we're two goals up, given the fact Gaspar's proven himself in past years, we're going to hope for a back blast from the past here. And that he can, well, provide the desired impact. Tejera, great little tackle. Just remembered, I've subbed Tejera on in this game. Is that just blatant favouritism or is that a stroke of genius? So far, he's not put a foot wrong and we could be on the attack again here. Sula, I'll tell you what, he is having fun on the left wing, isn't he? he say, I say he's having fun. I'm not having fun watching him. He's just giving the ball away in a horrific area. Sanders, one-on-one. -on -one. Oh my word, we've been let off the hook. Ten minutes left of this game. Liverpool only two shots on target across the whole of it. I do feel like we have been the better team, but... We've got to remain vigilant. We've got to remain switched on here, especially with the attacking talent they possess. Jamfi, Tejera, just having their own little game of head tennis in our penalty area. Not sure that's what's needed in the 83rd minute, but who am I to judge? Alvarez bringing it forward. Gray with it for them. Trying to pick out a man. Grasser got half a foot in, but not away from danger. Saunders already missed one opportunity. He has missed another there. Liverpool are very, very much on the attack in this game. They've gone to two inside forwards. With that in mind, and with limited time left in this game, I'm going to change our wing-backs to defend. I'm actually going to bring in Gonzalez for his live commentary debut. He's going to slot in as our backup left wing-back. He's not a consistent performer. Allegedly, he loves big games. And does it get bigger than the Carabao Cup final? I don't think it does, he says as a highlight begins. Gaspar, Ganino, Rios. What can we do? Tejera. I hate the fact Tejera's wearing gloves in April. It's not that cold. Actually, it's March. But still, it's not that cold. You don't need gloves on the pitch. I'm turning into Graham Souness. Help me. James, Alvarez, Reyes. Why have they got all these exotic sounding players? They're knocking around the ball superbly. Also, Trent's in midfield for them. Life imitates art. Ray That's a red card, isn't it? Lucas Reyes has lost his head. This game is done. I love the fact they're playing... Trent Alexander-Arnold as a segundo volante. The football manager's been watching real life. Okay, breathe a sigh of relief. That was straightforward again. I don't want to jinx it, but it felt pretty good. Unlike last year's Carabao Cup, we got an early goal in this game. We felt in control, and you can see Manny Wilford, the former Liverpool man, is going to be the man to hoist the trophy aloft. I bet he's loving that. If I was him, I'm doing it in front of the Liverpool players. I'm looking them in the eyes as I lift this trophy. It is Guernsey FC, Carabao Cup champions for the second year in a row, and the confetti, the kit, the can. It all matches. It's a conspiracy. This is our competition. I have to say, that is a really, really good win. That, that gives us a psychological edge knowing that we've got Liverpool to really do battle with at the top of the Premier League. But before all of that, we've got the, the Conference League to look forward to now. Oh my word, we've got our European away day. And good news, everyone, we have qualified for the Conference League next year. I am hoping we're going to be finishing the top four and getting Champions League football. But yeah, Conference League football guaranteed. Huzzah! We are currently 13 points inside the top four. Usually it's top five that get Champions League football with the new seeding stuff with the new fancy Champions League that scares me. That said, I don't think our battle this year is for top four. I feel like our battle is a title fight. But while that title fight might be big, sexy and exciting, is it as exciting as taking on our affiliates in Chilina right now over in Slovakia? 
I don't think so. As I mentioned earlier, we did play them earlier in the group stage and win 9 0. Um, I think this second half of the episode is going to be more about the away day and just getting the rotated team's confidence high. The away leg is the first leg coming up, so without further ado, let's get to the away day. We're heading to Slovakia, and I'm rather excited. Okay, it's time for a European away day, and we are heading to the Pod Dubnom Stadium. I probably said that wrong. Apologies to the Slovakian viewers out there. I've never looked at Slovakia on a map. Zelina is apparently a city. Hopefully I can find it. So for today's away day, you know, you know the deal by now. We're flying away. It's very rare that we don't fly anywhere from the island of Guernsey. And we are heading to Slovakia and Zelina. Where's Zelina? I found Zelina. Tell you what, I could be a detective. I'm looking for the pod something or other stadium it doesn't seem like a very big pl place selena if i go to satellite view i'm looking for a square of grass i mean i say all of that there's lots of squares of grass here selena seems very green i found a stadium that's not the stadium i found what allegedly is a skate park from this blurry image i i'm not convinced it's a skate park I'm just doing a tour of the place. Oh my word, we found a stadium. Is this the stadium? I think this is the stadium. What is up with that roof? Also, there's the river Va. Never heard of that river. Clearly, they're not a fan of long words, are they, in Slovakia? Okay, first thoughts. There is technically a car park. It's, it's not the nicest car park I've ever seen. But if we click on the Street View Man... Is there stuff to see? Oh my word. Is there ever? I mean, this is the stadium from the outside. I think this is actually the back of the stadium. Are we in the right place? I think we're in the right place. It's it's the That's the badge. We are in the right place, I can confirm. Here's the car park. And I mean, it's not the most high-tech car park we've seen, but it is functional. I'm not sure what I think about the design of the stadium. It looks like a cake. You know, like you have icing around the edge. It's got cake energy. Their badge is quite cool, though. I'll give them that. Is that a root at the bottom of the cross? What, what is that? It's probably some local thing. I don't want to offend the people of Slovakia. I, I just don't know what it is. We can go around the car park. Oh, my. Where am I? I'm on the pitch. I don't. How have I got here? I mean, here is the stadium. It's the same design on all sides. I can't work out if I like it or not. I love the fact they've blurred the numbers of the seats on Google. I'm a, I assume this is AI done. Imagine being the bloke at Google who has to blur the individual seat numbers. I mean, he's not done a very good job. He's missed some numbers there. Right, what other dots are there on the pitch? There's one at the centre circle. Is this drone footage? Are we on the pitch? Oh, it is drone footage. I think... What do I... I don't know what I think of this stadium. The roof is weird, right? Do, are there any other stadiums in the world that have this roof? It looks... It looks like I've just copied and pasted it a load. Also, is the pitch artificial or am I going crazy? That does not look like real grass. I've got to say, Slovakia, very picturesque. Look at it, look at this, just surrounded by hills on one side. Looks very, very pretty. You've got the transport links of the trains, you've got the main roads, you've got the river. You can arrive on your yacht, you can drive to the stadium, you can get a train. You could probably land a helicopter if you wanted to there. I don't know if I like this stadium or not. Like, it's cool. It's unique. I just, from like a personal design standpoint, do I like the look of the roof? The roof is really, really distracting me. I can't get beyond it. What is going on with the floodlights, by the way? It looks like they built the initial tower, then realised when they attached the lights, oh crap, these aren't actually po pointing at the pitch. So they just bolted on an extra bit to angle the lights. I mean, it's unique, this stadium. I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. I've seen this picture here of it at night with the floodlights on, and I actually kind of like it under floodlights. Can I give it a night score and a day score? Right, the MSK, Shalina Stadium, I am going to give 6 out of 10. There's not a lot going on around the outside. I still can't work out if I like the roof or not, or the floodlights. But if nothing else, it's been unique, and I feel like my mind is enriched for being here. So I think the plan of attack for this second game is to take on Shalina, do it as a recap -y thing. If we beat them 9-0 or maybe slightly less, probably won't do the second leg today. Instead, I'll leave it with suspense, you know. Will we have beaten Chelsea? Will we have won the second leg? You know, you'll have to come back tomorrow for probably a youth intake and the next round of the Conference League too. You'll not know we're playing. It's going to be like a mystery. So for this game, we are going to be playing the rotator team. We should be capable of taking care of Shalina. If you're wondering about their key man, it is this guy, Vash, here, who, well, his contract's up in three years. He's their key man. 
He's not very good. We should be beating them convincingly. Like I said, rotated 11. Diallo is going to lead the way up front. Sweeney coming into play ball playing defender. Hopefully he can have a good game today. I have to admit, this year I've really wrestled with how much do I cover the Conference League? Do I not worry about the knockout games? I feel like in any other European competition, I'd feel like I have to show you the entire knockout stages. With this competition, with the quality of our squad, it's a little less of a concern. Ganino in a wide area, floating it back post, headed away. I'd love us to get an early goal. We've got an early goal. Aaron McKillops just scored another absolute screamer. Okay, maybe scream is an exaggeration because it's not flown in the top corner off the crossbar. That's a ridiculous effort on his left foot. Can we, can we all agree on that? Wanted the early goal. We've got the early goal. Defender headed it away. McKillop just arrives. It was like Gerrard against West Ham in the FA Cup final. If you know the goal, you know the goal. That was ridiculous. We have managed to double our lead inside the first team, 15 minutes. Lopez Gonzalez, new addition from PSG, whipping it in. JV, the smallest player on the pitch, scoring a header. Half time, it is only 2 0. I thought once we got the two early goals, maybe the game would just get away from Jelena. To be fair, they've not had a shot on target. They've had 34% of the ball. And when you look at the XG story, it's just us attacking them. It's just attack versus defense. Diallo's only on a 6.8 rating today. You know what? Alanis, on you come, mate. You can play up front. Gaspar's on a booking. Big knot, on you come. And you know what? Cadman for Sulla. I feel bad for them. I'm bringing on the big guns. And by the big guns, I mean our young prospects for the future, who I really want to see develop. And, well, 45 minutes in the Conference League will help with that. This second half, I expected the floodgates to open. They haven't, but we do have a free kick here. We have a goal here, and it's JV with a ridiculous free kick. Did this go in off the post? He hit it with so much power. In off the underside of the crossbar. It's 3-0. I think mean, that's probably game over. I brought on the big guns. Big knot, Alanis. Hi, mate. Doing absolutely nothing. JV's on for a hat-trick. If he scores here, it'd be a ridiculous hat-trick, including two free kicks. He stood over it, the anticipation, the expectation, it's there, and it, it's 4-0. JV has murdered them single-handedly. I know what some of you are thinking, why don't you play him in the league more? I'm starting to wonder that myself. I am also reminding myself, we are taking on the Slovakian champions or something. They're not a good team. You know, it's been a one-sided game when you've won 4-0, they've not had a shot, and their goalkeeper got the best rating in the entirety of the other team on a 7.2, despite conceding four. Those free kicks, by the way, by JV were absolutely ridiculous. I kind of wish he'd save some of them for games where, well, they could be more important. Probably should give JV some praise there. He was very, very good. Now, like I already mentioned, with us winning that game 4-0, I could go and do the second leg right now, but it just adds to the record time, adds to the editing time. There's a Chelsea game in between, which, whilst Chelsea, you might think, oh, Ch Ch that's going to be a challenging game. Chelsea are not that great at the moment this season. They're down in ninth. They're a long way behind us. Looking slightly further ahead, like I already mentioned, it's the Tottenham game, it's the Liverpool game, it's the Man City game. They are going to be the three definitive games in our season. Right now, I don't quite know how the Conference League matches fit in and around them. With that in mind, like I said before kickoff, we're going to leave it as a mystery. Where are we going on a European away day next time? You'll have to come back tomorrow to find out to end the week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, do make sure to drop a like on it. We'll be back tomorrow with more Park to Prem action. We are in a title fight. We are fighting at the top. I want to believe we're not going to bottle it like Arsenal, but I've also seen us play and bottle far more comfortable situations than the one we're currently in. Take it easy. We'll be back tomorrow with more Park to Prem action to end the week. And until next time, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you on the next one. I'm out.